Township Supreme. Friendship Supreme. Finding the geek within. Hey everybody, my name is Michael. My name is Cleve. And welcome to an exciting episode of Friendship. Cream. That was Walter. That's beautiful. One of the Thank you. podcasts that dares to ask. Did Dwayne Wade play at the Miami Heat his entire career? I would have put all of my money on it. I would have sold my house to say he did. Uh, I'd have been like, sucker, bet me that <laughs> D Wade didn't play the whole career. <laughs> he dummies. Uh, um, I love you, Tells it tells you when I stopped paying attention to basketball, apparently. Um, right around right around when the three kings existed. I was like, well, basketball is over for us. It's only about Miami now. And it just left. Uh what are we talking about today, Glee? Uh we watched the documentary that you can find on Disney Plus. Uh it's a thirty for thirty on D Wade. Go watch it now before those price hikes happen. Fuck Disney Plus. It's called D Wade Life Unexpected. Yeah, go watch it on Disney Plus. And my bad, guys. Boy, is it. What a wild life that I didn't know this man lives. Surprise, guys. It's an athlete with a really bad upbringing. Here we are. Uh, he said he remembered uh, the cops pulling him out from under a bed and putting a gun in the back of his head, saying, Take me to your mom. That's a start. That was the start of the documentary. You know what? You know what? To me, too, it says a lot about how they always talk about how black people see the police. But that happened to Dwayne Wade, maybe one of the greatest just people Mm -hmm. in the world right now. And he said, "My first experience with the police, I'll never forget it my whole life." Uh, I want to say D.L. Hughley has a similar story where uh, a cop fucking manhandled him. He was like six, and they threw him on the hood of a car, handcuffed him, and then let him go and was like, stay out of trouble or some shit. And he's like, that shit, I'll never forget this day. Well, here's the thing, right? So let's live in a fictitious world where it goes the way they expect it to go. All parents tell their kids, if you're ever in trouble, you can always go to a police officer. If you need help, they're here to help us. They're community helpers, which is shit that they're taught in school currently to this day. They're considered community helpers. And teachers tell them if they're in trouble and they need help, please seek off police officers and they'll they'll be able to help you. Let's assume that that's the case. So you, from a, a young, naive age, you're taught they're the ones to help. The moment that that is shattered, that 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 image is shattered, and they abuse that power that they have to then petrify a child, let alone like an adult that's also just trusting in the system to take care of them, but a child, yes, that's going to stick with you forever. You have been taught to trust something that has then pulled a gun on you or betrayed you in such a way that it will stick with you for the rest of your life. That's best case scenario. That's not growing up already being told, hey, fuck cops. Because then you're just being re- reaffirmed that, yeah, cops are shit. Yep. Uh, I was going with this. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, no, I agree 1,000%, and it's even if you get to make it out of the situation. It will um, stick with you forever. It, for, yeah. The same thing with parents. Like That's why we keep talking about I how, like... I died that day, is what it's at. Yeah. It's, but it's the same level that you're taught... held to my head. It's the same level you're taught to trust in your parents. So when they betray that trust, mm-hmm. and you are then abused in a way that... A normal human being shouldn't treat another human being, especially one that supposedly loves you. That alters your life forever. Yeah, I think about we're talking about uh, basketball players. Um, did you hear that thing that Shaq had said? 
uh, it's recent. Shaq said that you should never, you should never open up or like be vulnerable to your woman because she'll turn around and throw it in your face. One, he's been like a serial cheater. Yeah. So, and has no current lady. So, I don't know how much advice you want to take from that. Yeah. But also, it's what it says to me is that he is so scared to trust somebody unconditionally. And that has to stem from somewhere. Yeah. Something had to have happened to him in his early part of his life where he's like, I'll never. Who and then it gets to the point where it's like, well, who are you talking to about the things that you need to say then? Right. It's just it's crazy to me that yeah. I mean, it's as easy as you know, I trusted a girlfriend and she fucking humiliated me and now I never trust any I never trust tell any woman anything. Again, even though he's not the best partner on his side. Um so we'll go differently about this one. This goes over Dwayne Wade's whole career. From uh, being like six or seven to life after basketball. What part surprised you the most? What part interests you the most? Um, hearing him talk about how almost dead inside he was playing ball in uh Chicago yeah. and then in uh Cleveland yeah and only yeah, finding like, purpose in Chicago because of gun violence I was going to say he had a little gas just for simply like being like oh I'm well I'm one I'm from Chicago but right. two being like oh this is why I'm here I have a purpose to be here and uh, I didn't know about his cousin. That no. was very terrible and unfortunate and just proves to what they were speaking about. She was, um, for, for anybody out there that wants to know and doesn't want to watch it, she was shot while registering her kids for she had four kids. Walking, walking down the street with a stroller. 32 years old shot on the... So wild. Um, I mean, it was in the news. I didn't know about his child outside of Gabriel Union. I did not know that. Sh- that was that was shocking. Yeah, I didn't know that. Ex- uh, and it, it it didn't seem like he cheated on her necessarily. They said it was a break. So you know, it's an agreement, an agreement it. between them two, I suppose. Whether it's in order to help the relationship continue on or what, what, it, what have you. I feel I feel bad for her because later on they try mm-hmm. to have a kid together and they're having difficulties and she's what anybody does at that point when they're trying and they can't, which is okay, obviously it's my fault. He right. has a kid, so it's not him. Right. What am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? I don't and she even says we think about doing a surrogate, but then I don't get to be a real mom. I yeah, I felt so bad when she said that. Oh, yeah, it, I mean, I can't imagine that feeling right. on multiple levels. But for, you know, the fact that we can have kids and the fact that we're not the on her side of the the coin for having a kid. Right. Yeah, that was sad. I I, I will say I I love their relationship. At least what is shown to us. Um, they're so, they're so great together. Yeah, they, it was they beautiful. Are, uh, they're one of my like favorite couples of people, and I also feel like it's funny because people will argue differently. I have a friend who uh, is like that's Gabriel Union's husband. Yeah. That's just because you know she didn't know sports or whatever. You're talking about but Simone Biles' husband, like right? They are at the same level. Yeah, you know what I mean. I can yeah, see them as being real power level. Couple. Unlike Simone Activist, Biles' husband. Huh? Unlike Simone Biles' husband. Yeah, whatever the fuck is. I think he plays for the Packers. He does play for the Packers. I that the other day. Yeah, he does play for the Packers. The audacity. And you know what's, sad, what's sad is you should be pumped. Yeah, 100%. And instead you're like, oh, I'm not, I can do more. Shut up. Just be, this woman 
This woman is creating moves. Most decorated as she, gymnast as she's out there in the whole fucking world. They're they're docking Changed her the points because she did something so wild. They're saying that's not fair for these less talented people that you're doing this amazing thing. Change so the whole shut sport. Up. Yeah, just shut up and let that be your wife. Go away. Not Dwayne Wade. Pray. He'd be building her up. They're so good together. I love. Yeah, them so I, yeah. I really. Perfect. That was a. It was. It was a delight to see how well they work because it's it's un, it's uncommon, right? Like every relationship has bumps and obstacles, and it's super telling how strong that relationship is, whether they get over those obstacles or not together. That's a it's a it's a big thing, and, and I, they did. I was, yeah, and it was interesting too getting to see when I learned about them being together, they were married. It's just what I knew. Yeah, I I wasn't following anything before then, so it was interesting to see like the first moment she makes an appearance in the documentary, and they're like riding together, and he, he's getting LASIK surgery, and she's China, like, yeah, he thought yeah. he did Holly Berry, and then he saw me, and was like, oh no. I do think it's weird, however. They mentioned how he had Gabriel Union posters on his wall in college, and it's always been weird to me when, like, you like you were like this person, and then you get to be with that person. It's not, but it is. Like, Me- meeting your hero situation. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's your dream. But like fornicating maybe? with your hero. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully that wasn't. Yeah, anyway. I mean, he. Um, here's the thing, like, <laughs> continue. No, I'm good. <laughs> um, you get to see him with all his kids, which is, I mean, I'm gonna say now he might have had this not great moment where they were off with Gabriel Union, and him and his wife got a divorce. But amazing fucking father. Yeah. Oh, like never out the gate was in question. Yeah, out the gate as a single dad was was running, killing it. Yeah. He and, and and you know you know what made him an amazing dad was not the you know obviously the stepping up to the plate and stuff but the remorse that he had when he got the phone call cuz you got to see him i i'm not understanding the relationship here with whoever the camera person was in some of these interviews but he had someone like interviewing him randomly throughout his like career like randomly in college and stuff so it had to be a friend uh, some something that just he was like hey i want to remember these things let's talk about it today yeah um maybe but you got to see him receive the call where he won the case for custody and was going to have the children 100% of the time. And you could see in his face like the remorse of knowing that these kids would not get a mother in their lives because of what happened. And he never spoke ill of her. With her now. No, never. Because they, they didn't split because something terrible happened. They just kind of drifted apart. They were arguing and yeah, he said they just grew up to be different people because they knew each other from since ninth grade nine. Yeah. or nine yeah. years old, and got together in high school. Um, yeah, I answered your question, right? Uh, I believe so. Okay, nine year difference, but good on Gabrielle. Fifty one. She older than him. Fifty one. He's forty two. Does that make you feel better about the poster thing? Yeah. It's not him saying, I, man, I, I wish I could date a Olsen twin, and then when they turned 18, dating them. But, Fair enough, yeah. Or dating, whatever Dane Cook's fucking doing. Or fucking I guess she, she wasn't watching him in college going, can't wait till that guy gets out. So yeah, I guess that's fine. Um, I didn't realize he won as many titles as he did. He, I, I, I forgot that they won back to back. I knew they won one. Mm-hmm. The two I didn't realize they won back to back. I remember them chanting for the three peat. Didn't happen. Um, what a wild free agency, by the way, for the people who <laughs> listen to us and like know anything about sports. For the top three athletes to be available and get all three is wild. And we'll 
I mean, arguably never happens. Agreed on the free agency to get all three of them together. And the only reason it happened is because, two, well, two things. Dwayne Wade had to take a cut in, co- in price. He took a cut in his pay. And LeBron James called all three, uh, had all three on a conference call. I was like, we're going to do this? And they're like, well, if you're in. He's like, yeah, no, I'm in. And they're like, well, fuck yeah. Like, let's, why not? Let's, let's run it. Let's yeah. run it. And even, God, it's, okay, this is the theme of this, this month. And I'm, at this point, to our one listener, I'm sorry that I keep hitting this, this, this uh, note. But the thing that makes the difference and the people that we want to talk about and the people that should be, immortalized is that this man was more than just the sport. A, to take a cut in your pay uh, for, for what you've already done everything for Miami. Why should you be the one Chicago is offering you a shit ton more money? Why would you not want to go somewhere else? Everybody's, everybody's wanting you and you could go anywhere you want. You've already won at least one title at that point. On top of that, then you win two with LeBron and Chris. And LeBron says, I got to go back. Calls Dwayne and says, hey, before it goes you know, public, I think this is what I want to do. And the first thing Dwayne said is, I knew I just had to make sure he felt good about his decision and that he was okay and knew that we'd be fine. And like, because that's who he was, right? That mentality doesn't exist in every person. I'm telling you right now, Lonzo Ball doesn't give a shit about anybody or any fucking thing that anybody's doing. He wants him to get some himself to get some money. Yeah, I don't hate on those people. Good on you for getting your money, but like, that's never going to be what makes you the greats. There, there's like. The people will post that every once in a while, like, hey, do you want to make this much money or do you want to win this many championships? What's more important to you? And it's a real decision people have to make. And there's nothing wrong with choosing the money. And there's nothing wrong with choosing the championships. It's all about what you're good with on how your career went. And, oh, man. The... Cause so okay, so they had their first year and they didn't they didn't win and they were a little devastated about well not a little devastated they're pretty devastated about it and Dwayne Wade talks to LeBron and goes oh that was the other yeah together. yeah and the chills I had watching the highlights of these two men play together was oh man it's it's a NBA euphoria of feeling. Well, and it was another, it was another moment. So yeah, they go to the Bahamas with, you know, as one does when you need to just get away, you and your whole family and all your friends and their, their families all go to the Bahamas. You you pay for everybody's hotel. And you all smoke giant cigars and sit on a real fancy beach. Anyway, um, they were sitting in the Bahamas and it's this, here's another pivotal moment of Dwayne Wade being Dwayne Wade went to LeBron and said, you know why we lost? Because you're not being you, you're worried about making sure that everybody's getting theirs. Go out there and play, be you, be the number one. We'll you need to be the star. Right. Yeah. And and this is Dwayne Wade who's been told, Miami's yours. This is not Wayne County, this is Wade County. This is yours. We have built everything around you. We are going to get the players you need. We grabbed Shaq when we thought that's what you needed. We we're going to get everything to build around you. And he said, I don't care that I'm, I'm the pillar. You are now because that's how we're going to get it. And we'll support you. We'll back you up. That's a leader. That's, that's a great. That's the difference. And, and it just, that's what's going to make a person stand out and be the best is that they can nope. put that up not only did I take the pay cut I'm, ta- I'm stepping back <laughs> as leader to let you be great like you are and then got left and then just made you feel good about leaving 
took the pay cut, <laughs> stood back, <laughs> and then said, don't worry, man. Go be you and have fun in Cleveland. Yeah, you're, you're going to do great. You're going to be great out there. Live your best. I'll, I'll support you. Left Chris in fucking Miami and went to Chicago. <laughs> but watch. Well, yeah, because they paid. The, anyway, yeah. um, just watching Dwayne Wade be able to take a ball and just chunk it across the court. Yeah. Just have LeBron fly through the air, grab the ball, and not even dunk it all the time. Just, I'm just drop it in the basket. And that's it all was, I have to do. It was the highlights for the him when him and Shaq were playing together against Dallas. And they were down, and it was like, if they lose tonight's game, like it's over. And he, oh, he's yeah. like, he's like, nah, we're not fucking going out like this. And scored like he's seventeen unanswered up. points. Got up and walked away from the. Yeah. Nah, we're not going out like that. I got you. Don't even worry. And about fucking it. And seventeen won? unanswered points, and then oh. won it, and then came back and won the whole thing. Oh man, that was like third, fourth quarter too. That, you you want to talk about? Fuck man, I remember him so much. Unanswered. 17 unanswered points. I remember this dude so much, and I'll tell you what, my my opinion must have changed a lot in coaches, because I, now I love people like Mike McDaniel, but this motherfucker, I can, Mark something, I can't remember his name. I, he was the Miami Heat coach, and I could not stand his goofy-looking ass ever. But he just he was he was just excited to be alive and to be with these people, man. He was just pumped. I don't think he had any idea where he was most of the time. But uh he he was talking about it and he was just real pumped. He's man, it was so great to watch him just come back and fucking kill it. And and I, I at the time Oh, he was the one guy that was like, I was skipping that down to the gym. <laughs> I was ready to go. Uh at the time, uh I, I was rooting for Dallas. I don't remember why. I didn't care that much. Neither both, team. Both had never won, so yeah. really it was like, yeah, we get it. It's... Nowitzki finally came back and got his. Don't worry. And he beat the Three Kings, so that was a big deal. I did always hate them being called the Three Kings. I didn't care for it. Fine. Whatever. Dumb. Maybe it's LeBron's nickname that kind of carried over to it. Yeah, I think so. And that's probably why I hate it. I respect him so much as an athlete. I just can't stand him. I don't know why. There's because not he's a great. good quote for four for three. You know, like there's a three the amigos, three duo. musketeers. Yeah, I mean, let's get three musketeers. Three musketeers are fantastic. The three caballeros. I don't know if that really. That's in Miami. Three, Dog, it's in Miami. Women. Yeah, that would have worked. <laughs> So we had to figure. Everybody wants to be Donald, and all we want to be. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I everything, everything about this this man and this documentary, I just loved. I as, loved all of it. As an athlete, as a human being, watching him raise his boys, and seeing the love he had—that's always what ends up. Every time, man, watching these stupid documentaries is knowing that, like, they had shit backgrounds and coming up and still being everything that they never had. And then we end it with uh, the most honest and pure hearted, like, just a dad talking about life and dad life, I guess. And so his daughter ends up becoming trans and he's like i just i don't know what that life is he says i growing up no one would have told me if they were because it just wasn't how it went and so when your child comes up to you and says i'm not a boy i'm i'm a girl like you say all right yeah you are and we're going to support you we're going to do everything we can to make sure that you are everything that you can be, no matter what it is that you want to be. And then you see them in the golf cart and he's videoing her. And I don't think she knows she's being videoed. And he, he's like, you know, what does this mean to you? And she's just talking about looking in a mirror and not knowing who she is. And, and, and now she can be her. And she says, what's the point of being on this planet? If you're not going to be who you're supposed to be. Yeah. And I'm like, what a profound child you have how lucky are you to have this kid who just has this understanding 
Yeah, I'm looking in the mirror and being like, I, I finally see you. And yeah. not looking in the mirror and being like, who is that? Oh, yeah. Well, and, it's great. and then to know that you're a parent, you're a good enough parent that your kid had no fear in coming to you about this. Or at least not enough to where they didn't come to you about this. And to know that you would be that supportive. Yeah. He says, I didn't know anything about that. So my job is to go find out. Yeah. That's nuts. And they're both of them. Both of them are uh, him and Gabriel Union are just the most supportive people. Towards their daughter that I've. I mean, ever gotten to witness. Well, no, I say it's nuts because, like, it's just, it's crazy to me how polarizing this topic can be and how many parents have issues with these kids wanting to be who they are. Mm-hmm. And I, I think about it all the time. That if my child were to come to me with any anything, I would hope that they could come to me with anything, that it would never change the love or the way that either the love I had for them or the way that they saw how I loved them. Like, I were, I, fuck, man, I remember, I think I was 10 or 11. And I remember chewing on my nails and my dad asking me what I was so nervous about. And I told him nothing. I wasn't nervous about anything. And he said, well, you only chew your nails if you're nervous. And and at the time, I just had a really bad habit of chewing my nails. I still to this day do, and I work really hard on it. Um, And I said nothing. And he said, well, if you have something to tell me, like you should tell me now. I I don't have anything to tell you. You know, it was good. I was scared you were going to tell me you were gay. Like, out of the blue. And I was like, no, that was that was not my intention. He goes, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. And then just stopped talking. And then, like, we just sat in the car in dead-ass silence. And, like, 10 or 11. And, like, I, the fear of God was stricken into me that... If I had anything to talk about, it was never going to get talked about. Right. I, just, like, that... That's... that's <laughs> So, like, the fact that someone who was raised in a very rough environment and didn't have that experience of any, like, you know, LGBTQ people around him that he was aware of, to be able to be so quickly accepting and understanding is the purest form of uh, parenting. Yeah. Right? There's, like that's, no, there's that's, no question in him. He didn't hesitate. That's the unconditional that love that you can only hope for a parent, right? Like, right. That's what you would expect for someone that's parenting a child. I tell people all the time, like, if my kids came up to me and told me any, anything about that, first of all, they shouldn't have to, right? But if they come up like that, the only fear that I would have is how difficult the world's going to be for them because mm-hmm. of how ignorant the world is. But yeah. if there's any place that you should be able to be yourself, it's with me. Yeah. And it should never have to come down to you having to hide anything like that. Yeah, I saw someone that that's something that was pretty profound in, in my head, I think. Like it, it kind of like clicked in my head that they were right in the way that they were thinking. And it was essentially. You know, uh, my kids should never have to come out to me. That I would much rather them introduce their same sex partner to me, just like they would a girlfriend, and for it to never skip a beat. Because it shouldn't be a big ordeal to be able to tell me that. It should be a here's my uh, significant other. Yeah. Accept it. Like it's it's. But anyway, this isn't about this, right? This is about Dwayne Wade. He just keeps building on the fact that he's an amazing human being who's always taking care of him, his family. He's taking care of his mom and dad coming back yeah. into his life. Uh, how about how about getting custody of his two kids and being like, "Let me take my nephew too." Right. Yeah. Just knowing that uh, he was going to be able to. Do better for him. 
Provide and, better. And it was just him at the time. Yeah. There was no Gabriel then. It was just mm-hmm. him and his three boys. And he yeah. treated all of them like they were equal. Took care of all of them. Uh, one of them is uh, playing ball now. And uh, doing interviews with them and being silly with them. And, and it's... Oh, that was... I think that might have been one of my favorite scenes. When uh, at the All-Star game, out of the back of the crowd, his son yells over, Hey, you ever think you'd play one-on-one with you? Or who would win on one-on-one against your son? Like, I've already beat, I've already beat him. I'll beat him one more time after this. <laughs> I'm going to beat him one more time after the end of the season. I'm never playing him again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he just... It was just... A pure, genuine human being, right? And that's that's what we like to see. Yeah, he's just great. He had his fuck ups, right? Genuine. Yeah. But he owned it. As far as we can tell, he did. There's always that's the problem, right? Is everything is <laughs> I mean, also, it's also on a podcast, which kinda angers me, but it's whatever and fun. We'll tag him in this podcast. So he knows we're talking about his documentary that came out. A quick cl- collab. Anyways, guys, let us know what you thought down below. Go check out D Wade Life Unexpected on Disney Plus before that sp- that price spike goes up. Because again, fuck Disney and Bob Iger. All the way. Um, if you guys want more content from us, too goddamn bad. This was the last episode right here. Just kidding, guys. We're everywhere uh, at friendshipsupreme.com. Which will just take you to our Twitch channel. We're everywhere, guys. <laughs> it's French and Supreme everywhere. Um, I've been Michael. This is Steve. My job is to help you become who you are. But I'm not trying to change who you are. God bless that, man. What? <laughs>